Trek Podcast 918, the 13th day of Christmas. Hi everyone and welcome to this week's Mighty Mighty My Mac Podcast number 918. Well, we've been away for two weeks and the G-Men, that's me and Guy, or Guy and I, I should perhaps say, well, we're getting into the spirit of the season. That season being, why the heck is it so cold and windy? It's certainly been cold over here, Guy. Is it cold where you are? It is. It is. Um, we're, we, we've are we been looking at, now I'm talking about Fahrenheit, of course. We're looking at um, low 30s on most days when I first get up in the morning, which if it was centigrade, that would be like, wow, low 30s, that's great. But uh, in, in Fahrenheit, not so not, much. Not so much. No, not so much. No. I don't know what that is in centigrade, to be perfectly honest with you, because we've been waking up to minus uh, five and six here. So that's probably mid 20s. Mm, yeah. And I know you guys had like a big snowstorm. Well, uh, no, b- big. <laughs> no, yeah. let, let's get Everything this right. Relative. No, I tell you what happened. I'll tell you what actually happened was the southeast of the country went into meltdown. Meltdown being the operative word for the fact that it snowed, but actually that was after quite a lot of frosts and heavy frosts. And then it snowed and then I think it froze again, which then causes the roads to become an ice Free, rink. Like freezing if, rain. Yeah. If they haven't been gritted treated. correctly and treated so um but i think a few airlines um uh, airports closed as well and that just sent that just sent everybody into apoplexy and then everybody was complaining oh no yeah, oh, yeah, we can't cope with a little bit of snow well actually it wasn't quite... is that how they sounded yes absolutely they always okay, sound good. like that and it and it wasn't quite that bad <laughs> actually on that day <laughs> on that on that day i drove 200 miles well 400 miles down to torquay and back for a, a family funeral so that is you like, know, oh sorry to hear that oh that's fine um we did see a six foot snowman on the way down but you know the roads were clear it wasn't too bad but there were parts of the country where they struggled i'll agree um but yes i wouldn't call it a big snowstorm you know not three feet of snow which even even that in some parts of america isn't a lot of snow um so yeah it's, but well, it has I mean, been told but it's breaking up it? apparently well, apparently it's going to be had, warming um, up it's going to be warming up next week so uh, they actually moved the, the the Buffalo Bills Detroit Lions game. Oh right, to Detroit. Well, they're used they they used to snow up there, aren't they? They're Buffalonians. Yeah, but this was this was like really really spectacular. <laughs> one right. of those one of those for the love of God, don't leave your house kinds oh, of snows. Right. Okay. And we've gotten we've gotten a couple of those here in Virginia, but for for the most part. You know, we're right on, we're like just east of a mountain range, which is typically is like a buffer. So we don't get the kinds of snow that, uh, that they would get a little bit farther out to the west. And that's honestly, that's okay with me. I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. Well, did you, did you know, um, I can't remember what the name of the, um, I think it was a, oh, there was some European, I can't remember his name now, but we, with the way the planet goes around the sun and with the angle of the planet and a few other things ignoring it's it's not flat (laughs) no it's not flat um we are actually currently supposedly in and i have heard this before actually we're supposedly in um a, a period of ice age now what that gets me to think is how the hell hot is it going to be considering we are heating the planet up when we're not in a period of ice age? <laughs> Yay. What does that have to do with like the El, El Nino? El no, no, you know, no, no, no. This is no, we're not ignoring that. We're talking about the distance of the, the earth from the planet and the angle of the planet and the way it is in, oh, in relation because to it changes in relationship to the sun because it does change. Uh, it goes between 22 degrees off off center to about 24 degrees and we're currently at about 23 i think um and it's getting you know i think it's going colder so you know if we were in the warm section and we're heating up the planet well we'd be in right trouble wouldn't we so uh there you go. anyway anyway according to who you talk to we're in right trouble no matter what the hell well we are yeah so, i think we are yeah. i think we are well if we're not it's probably our kids and our grandkids and the great great grandkids and the great 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 grandkids are in trouble That's okay so we'll be dead and don't care yeah i don't care 
All right. Yeah. yeah. Hey, right. <laughs> We're living large. You guys are screwed. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, welcome that's, to the optimistic <laughs> podcast that's the spirit of the season isn't it yeah that's, yeah we're good you're now <laughs> there we go <sighs> oh dear we are joking Speaking of the weather we are, anyway you've been away haven't you i you, have you, I you've have. been I somewhere was... where it's a bit warmer where oh, you know more, more than a the, bit where the Buffalonians didn't have to go and play in the Detroit Lonians ground. I actually see what watched, I did there. I put Detroit I and Lions together. I combined it. The yeah. the, the Buffalo Lions. De, the Buffalo the Buffalonians and the Buffalo Detroit Lonians. Detroit Detroit. Lion, uh, would it de- be Detroit Lonians or just Detroit Lonians? <laughs> well, whichever. Yeah, because it's not actually a word anyway. So no, correct. <laughs> we're making it up as we we're making it up as we go along. Oh well, there's a surprise. Yeah, I know. It's like welcome Shocker. to yeah, what the things that we do every single week podcast. Uh, yeah, I was down in Florida. Uh, temperatures were like, and we're talking Fahrenheit, where it's like high seventies, low eighties the entire week, uh, and it's kind of spoiled me because you know, I grew up down there, but because I left in. 1981 it's it's been a long time it's it, it's it's only when i actually go to florida that i remember oh it's warm here no matter what <laughs> no matter what it's like up here and the, the weird thing is the people that that live in florida and the people that have lived in florida for a long time you get to like high 50s low 60s they're breaking out parkas and and looking for their spears that they're going to hunt um like walruses with because you know it's so cold whereas you know high 50s low 60s here we're still in shorts and t-shirts going what the hell is your problem yeah it's a bit like um the women in newcastle not not to have a go at the women in newcastle but apparently i I think we're past that now that we get (laughs) that you know it, it can be really cold up in newcastle but they're going out on a friday night they've got hardly anything on apparently and you know that it's really cold because they're no, we're not going to go. No, no, I wasn't going no, no. that route at all, young man. <sighs> anyway, so I, you know, the whole time I was down there, I was thinking I am not ever going to go back to that cold weather. And then my money ran out, <laughs> and I and I had to scamper back, scamper, scamper back home. Skippity scoop, um, skippity doo. Florida was a lot of fun. And I had a really good time. I have two brothers that live down there. My brother, Bill, who lives in Flagler, and my brother, Larry, who lives down in Palm Beach. And I spent most of the week, that first weekend with my brother, Bill, and his, his wife, Daisy, and uh, his son, Bill, who was, hold on, he's- Don't get it mixed William up. William Thomas. No, it, it's because the, here's the thing. Half of the family seems to be named William Thomas. So right. there was there was my father uh, who passed away in, in 94. And then his son, who I saw down in Flagler, his son, who I also saw down in Flagler because their house got destroyed by the last hurricane. And he's staying with his brother, Jeff, because reasons and his son and now his son. So there's like, once again, there are four living generations of William Thomas's in our family. And it's, it's like you walk into a room and you say, Hey, Bill. And half the room goes, yeah. Can I, can I ask a question guy? You may. Can you not think of any other names for your That's children? That's kind of what I was, well, they named me Guy. So. <laughs> yeah, but you it, called it, your son Guy. Uh, yeah there's a story there but okay we won't go on to that one yeah i actually did not want to name him guy and it, there's a very funny story that goes with that but we're not going to go into that right now. okay maybe uh, maybe in the after show if you remind me um i won't so <laughs> <laughs> so um it was good to see bill and i spent most of the weekend with him bills. helping him it's with good some to see bills bills yeah well yeah. two bills i saw two bills and a Brandon. Okay. And a Jeff and a Carol and a Daisy. Jane. <sighs> yeah. So we <laughs> actually Saturday night, um, we, we had like this big family thing. Uh, Jeff 
and his wife, unfortunately, were were down in in Chile uh, dealing with some family stuff and didn't get back until Sunday. And then I left on Monday. So I only saw Jeff and his wife, Carol, very, very briefly on Sunday before I had to go, really had to go. So I went, I went down to South Florida. This is from like Central Florida, Central East Florida down to South Florida. Uh, visited with my brother Larry, who lives in Palm Beach, and met up with some some good friends of mine. Some of them I've known since like the fourth grade. Uh, Sandra and and her husband Tim. I actually stayed at their house on Monday night, and Monday night is when we all got together. And then they left the next day for St. Augustine to see their grandkids. When I don't have any grandkids yet. And there's news on that front, too. My son, Peter, got engaged. I don't hey, know if I mentioned that here. Congratulations, Peter. Yeah. And they'll probably, they're, they're probably looking at late 23 or, or 24. I, you know, it's been so long. We've been away for two weeks. I can't remember whether, whether you mentioned that or not before. You may well have I, done. I don't know. Well, actually, you know what? I couldn't mention it because... Yeah, you might into, you might have mentioned it to me, but you couldn't mention it on the podcast, maybe. Yeah, because it hadn't been official yet, and he kind yeah. of sprung it yeah. on her uh, yeah. when they went on. That's a short right. Trip. That's what was happening. Yeah, yeah, I remember now. And then cool. we had uh, they didn't know it, but we had like a surprise birthday party for uh, his fiance Liza, and an engagement party for the both of them when they got back from their trip, and that was a lot of fun. Cool. <sighs> so anyway, <laughs> th to finish off the Florida trip. So got together with all my friends down in South Florida and spent like a, uh, the rest of the week down there and then flew back on uh, last Sunday. And that was that was basically the entire Florida trip. But something else happened last week that was I had such a good time. I love I don't know how you feel about live theater. I love live theater. Yeah, live theater is good. And there was a show. I've only I've fallen. Wanted to I've see. only fallen asleep once at a live theatre show. <laughs> you must not have been that good of a show. <laughs> but I, I bought tickets some time ago to see Wicked. If you've heard of that one, I have heard of that yep. show. Yeah, uh, at the Kennedy Center, and I see you've <laughs> you've, re you've changed the spelling of center. Thank you for that, by the way. <laughs> I haven't changed. I haven't changed the spelling of center. You corrected. I've it. corrected it. Correct. <laughs> Yeah, there's not this. Uh, I see that together doesn't have a U after the O, so you, <laughs> you, you slipped up there. So we saw them at this the Kennedy Centre uh, here in DC, and it was we were we were like front row, front row. But honestly, if if I could do it over again, I would have gone a little bit farther back because we were so close to the orchestra that some we missed some of the dialogue we couldn't hear all the dialogue because uh, the orchestra right. kind of yeah. kind of drowned it out Blast, there in the front row. It out. and you know that, but that's fine i mean we could see everything from the front row and it was it was such a great performance and if you have if you like live theater and haven't seen wicked i highly recommend it it cool. was so good and i'm not going to talk good. about it good. About what goes on <clears> in the show no spoilers uh uh, it, it's kind of a weird retelling of the Wizard of Oz. You're not going to tell. Where, you're not going to talk about it. Well, no. Dorothy gets the electric chair for, <laughs> for killing the Wicked Witch. It, it's like a complete Wicked Witch is dead. Of course. No, oh, I, I didn't know. Yeah. Is, is that, <laughs> I've not. I've not. I was going to watch the Yellow Brick Road this Christmas. <laughs> yeah. The the flying monkeys are undercover. Uh, There's flying detectives. monkeys. There are. <laughs> okay, right, right. All right, so that that's uh, I'm done. Yeah. What are you up to? Well, actually, quite a lot's happened in the last two weeks. I've, one of the weekends we were away down at my brother-in-law's. Um, Anne and I uh, wandered down there for a long weekend, took the dog with us, and uh, that was very nice. And that's why we couldn't do anything and record at all that weekend. You were away and I was away at the same time. The second yeah. week you were away, and then I had lots of things going on. I was actually going to plan and see if I could do something but it ended up being an absolute nightmare. So I didn't do anything. Um, I have finished work, Guy. I have R-E-T-I-R-E-D, apparently. Nice. Um, I don't like saying the word because 
I'm hoping I'm being able to be retired. Um, <laughs> it may be that I occasionally have to passively still look for work. So if anybody out there wants, I do a very good um, voiceovering modeling process. I think that was the Motown with, song too. What? <clears throat> R E T I R E D. That's just what it means to Anyway, I'm I'm here for voiceover work. Um or any other yeah. work. I can I can help you out with all sorts of stuff. Um, but I'm passively looking for work, I think, still. So if something crops up and it's really gonna float my boat, I'll probably do it. But yes, I am retired. I still can't say the word. Yeah, here's um, Gaz looking for work. Yeah, yeah, that's yes, about right. That's <laughs> that's about right, actually. Yeah. 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 leaning way um, back you know if if the um if the economies of scale which are going on over here in the uk certainly when it comes to our uh, electricity and gas prices then i may have to get a job pretty damn soon but hopefully not hopefully not um yeah so uh, that's oh, it so that's it from me gas out there come on earn your keep <laughs> yeah she's yeah. not in here is she no good oh well, i i am a kept man at the moment i, I am a kept man so but the, the problem is She'll be going, hmm, I'm thinking I should retire as well. And it'll be difficult for me to say, oh, no, you can't. Well, see, that was kind of the opposite for us. Tracy retired seven, eight years ago. All right. And she, when she when she told me she was going to retire, uh, this is how she coached it. She came to me and she said, well, my my contract with the company that I'm working for is up and they want me to drive like an hour and a half out to their their facility every day. And instead of that, I talked to our financial planner and she said, as long as I got, as in guy keeps working, we're fine. So I'm going to retire and you're going to keep working. And I was, I was kind of like, Oh, sure. Can we talk about this? And she says, no, I've already no, no. <laughs> put in <Done>. my <laughs> resignation. <laughs> so done. Yeah. Anyway, it's six o'clock, get your ass out of bed and go to work. Yeah. It's <laughs> I like it. Anyway, we're going to jump straight into Gaz's snippets. I've got to quickly find the appropriate page on my iPad. Um, OK. Oh, no, nope, that wasn't it. Yeah, this is it. OK. Apple looks to land a streaming rights for the Dutch Eredivisie Eredivisie. Eri Divisi, the Divi, 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 Dutch Soccer Divi. League. <laughs> it's oh. the Dutch Soccer League. Wait, wait, so, hold on, hold on. So hold they're going to spend a bunch of money yeah, won't to be get a lot. the exclusive streaming rights for the Dutch Soccer League. Well, that's what it says here. Okay. That'll be a huge draw here in the U.S. Uh, can, I just, can I just say this, Guy? Sure. It's not all about you. Wait, what? <laughs> Jaw dropped. What? Apparently, did I tell? I can't. I don't think I did this. Apple have been sued after a fatal Apple store crashing Hingham, Massachusetts. Do you remember that uh, car that went into uh, the Apple yeah. store? Well, apparently they're being so sued for not. Basically, the people are, are putting down that the the store didn't make sure that its staff and uh, customers were safe in the store <laughs> wait so they're supposed to <laughs> no i don't think they are their stores enough <laughs> so that a car can't drive through it i yeah i didn't follow up on this one but i've got a feeling that actually it's less the store they should be suing and more um the shopping center and you know um mal that, that that needs to be how about, uh, how about just suing the driver and the yeah, insurance yeah, absolutely absolutely Bloody lootly. I'm getting you know, you know why why should a store or a company <laughs> yeah. budget for I'm, making I'm their with you. store I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm totally oh, with you. God, so many stupid people there was with their hands out. A man find has, something else to do. Get, all right, we're moving on, guy. We're oh. moving on. We're stop I'm, I've made him angry, folks. I've made right. him angry. Yep. Um well a man has been robbed of 95 and don't forget these are over these um, snippets folks are from the past two weeks. So we're, you know, we're catching up here. A man has been robbed of $95,000 worth of iPhones outside the Apple um, uh, fifth Avenue store. 
A man carrying 300 iPhones worth some $95,000 was beaten and robbed near the Apple Fifth Avenue early morning, uh, New York police said. The 27-year-old victim was targeted moments after he'd left the Apple's 24-hour New York flagship at East 58th Street. The victim regularly makes large purchases from Apple as he resells the phones through his small business, according to police. So basically, he was targeted by people who said, yeah, he goes there early in the morning, collects his phones and walks away. We'll have some of that. Got, yeah, for, I, any, for anybody not on video, guy's face is a picture. It is an absolute picture. Why? <laughs> Okay. There are so many questions that he's, I know, there, he wants a few questions here. Why is he going to pick these up in New York City with its high crime at whatever o'clock in the morning? Why is Apple stores open at whatever o'clock in the morning? And what made him think that it was a good idea to buy 300 iPhones instead of just having them delivered to his house at o oh, at what o'clock in the morning? Okay, let me answer a few of those questions if okay. I can, because this is from my perspective. Maybe he had to collect them from the store at whatever o'clock it was in the morning because that's the only time he has available to him if he's a busy businessman. Air quotes. Um, <laughs> not all Apple stores are open 24 hours, 24-7, uh, um, but the Fifth Avenue store, it wouldn't surprise me if it does open really late because of where it is and the fact that it's quite a famous store. And lastly, maybe his busy schedule and his roving around selling style means that he, air <laughs> quotes, means that he can't have a point at which he has for people to deliver their phones to. Or maybe he can't guarantee that he's going to be in wherever it is he needs to be. Or perhaps maybe. the carriage charge is far too expensive because he lives just around the corner. Those are questions I'm really not going to be bothered as to whether I'm accurate or not on. No, they're Apple, completely accurate. Apple accessibility um, video highlights voice control, sound recognition, door detection, and so much more. Well, we know that Apple accessibility just gets better and better and actually gives people a big door leg up. detection. Yeah, that's what it said. Look, I'm only reading the snippet. I know, I guy. know, I know. I, I'm just I'm just picturing like an iPhone going, oh yeah, there's a door over there. <laughs> better better send you a notification. You're coming up to a door. <laughs> Thank you. People with accessibility requirements, Guy, would be very I grateful know. of all of this. Don't take a Mickey out of these people, please. No, I'm not. You're being very bad. <laughs> but I can imagine it going, bing, there's a door. <laughs> yes, I know. I just walked into it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sk skiers are accidentally... <laughs> Skiers are accidentally setting off the iPhone 14 grass detection, um, but a dispatcher has told them to leave the feature on because it's still worthwhile having the the um, the fake call. Well, they're not fake calls, are they? The uh, just um, un unneeded. The, yeah, because they can't ski for crap. There should be a can't ski for crap like toggle switch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't ski, so ignore all the times I fall down. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I was skiing. Yeah. All right, I get it. Um, I mind get you, it. they okay. could still, yeah, but it could still be useful because if you do have a, a, a bad fall while you're out skiing or there's an avalanche or something, then you're going to want that to actually kick into action. So, sure. Apparently, sure you will. Uh, apparently, Zuckerman, yeah, don't, it's not all about America where all the slopes are nice <gasps> and flat and people, they you know, really aren't. <laughs> <laughs> I've skied in America. It's easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I've skied in England. It's even easier. It's not. You cannot ski in England at all, mate. <laughs> well, I didn't. I didn't say it was a big hill. It wasn't. It wasn't a hill. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of, Here I go. Okay. I'm yeah. Done. <laughs> it's like trying it was, to ski in Florida. Um, yeah, Zuckerberg says Apple's policies are not sustainable. Well, who cares, Zuckerman? <laughs> yeah. As compared to your privacy concerns, Zuckerman. 
A California federal judge has given preliminary approval to Apple's plan to pay $50 million to settle a long-running class action lawsuit over the faulty MacBook butterfly keyboard. <sighs> Law 360 says the payment will include 13.6 million in guess what, guy? Attorney Lawyer fees. fees. Attorney fees. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Shocker. Uh, up to two million dollars in litigation costs and 1.4 million in settlement administration costs. Wowza. So what does that leave for the actual people that had the problem? Three and four pence. Yeah. That's not a lot. Not a lot. Nobody, nobody knows what three and four pence Shillings. is out of, outside of the yeah yeah farthings. feckles. <laughs> is it farthings or farthlings? <laughs> well, I don't know depend- why I wanted to say farthlings. I know that's wrong. It is wrong. Yeah. Um, apparently, Apple are now calling the AR slash A VR headset operating system XROS. Apple has decided to call the software that will run on its upcoming AR VR headset XR OS an update from the original Reality OS or ROS naming the company was planning on. There you go. So, so XR OS operating system that they haven't announced for the devices that they haven't yep. announced yep. is changing to a different name that they haven't yep. announced. Yes, absolutely. You got it spot on there. I am so glad I keep up with technology. Apple's iPhone 14 emergency SOS via satellite feature has saved a stranded man in Alaska. Anybody in Alaska would need to be saved. Um, <laughs> They're, they're all stranded. <laughs> You're in the middle of Alaska's biz, bi- biggest and busiest city. Pre- precisely. still stranded. <laughs> precisely. How the hell did I get here? I'm so glad you're on my wavelength with that. Yeah. So, uh, you know, now we've pissed off both of our listeners in Alaska. I'm so sorry. They're I'm laughing. Really sorry. They're, just they know fun. we're jessing. They know we're jessing. Um, so we Apple get all TV. Those angry letters. Apple TV. Yeah. Yeah. Handwritten letters. Them. Handwritten letters. <laughs> Apple I'm TV angry, Plus. And it's yeah. cold. <laughs> you see, you're making it worse, aren't you? I know I am. <laughs> Apple TV Plus has teased 2023 content, including Masters of the Air and Ted Lasso Season 3. We can't wait. Um, Google has again criticized Apple for not adopting RCS <laughs> for messages for the messages app. Their texting is stuck in the 1990s. Actually, I quite like the fact that their texting is stuck in the 1990s. Because it's more be secure. Well, it is more secure. Although, And WhatsApp, well, everybody goes, what's your, are you on WhatsApp? Yes. What's your number? Well, that's my text number. Just text me. Yeah, I, I am not on WhatsApp. <sighs> I wish I wasn't. I <clears throat> Apple can't is it? find it. <laughs> Where's the WhatsApp? What? WhatsApp? What <laughs> the hell's that? <laughs> I'm 62. Um, I don't know what that is. <laughs> TikTok, uh, get out uh, of my yawn. Uh, <laughs> Telegram, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Apple, what Western Union does. <laughs> Apple has accused a live core of brazen, air quotes, brazen oh. patent infringement in a new countersuit. Okay, so um, Apple has filed a patent infringement lawsuit against LiveCore, a company that has developed the ECG Cardia Band designed for the Apple Watch, among other ECG-focused products. LiveCore and Apple are already in the midst of a legal battle following an ITC complaint and antitrust lawsuit that LiveCore filed last year. According to Apple, LiveCore's product line has not been successful with customers and the company's failures in the market have led to it led to its opportunistic assertions of its patents against Apple. We'll wait and see how that goes. Yeah, there's a shocker. What a shocker. A a company that's having problems selling a product that's similar to something that Apple sells, so they're going to sue them (laughs) because that's their only means of making any money. Okay, got it. Good. Elon Musk. Quite a lot happened with Elon Musk while you were away, wasn't it? Yeah, I know. Elon Musk uh, says Apple's Twitter's largest ad client has now fully resumed advertising on the platform. Oh, has it? Apple plans to move uh, production out of China. 
I'm waiting for you to say Shaka. Well, I'm waiting for you to say Shaka. Well, they're not going to move everything. No, well, they can't. We've we've spoken about this before. Yeah, yeah. But they they really, really did need to diversify to different countries, a a lot of their production. Apple launches self-service repair in Europe. So now you can buy those really expensive boxes uh, and get genuine Apple spare parts. Well, not spare parts, spares to repair. Um, uh, in Europe, so Belgium, France, Germany, Italy, Poland, Spain, Sweden, and the UK. Um, Yay! Privacy changes set Apple at odds with the UK government over the online safety bill. Shocker. Um, now, this says the Slopes iOS app gets a major update with live interactive ski maps for 200 resorts. Reason I mention this because I don't normally talk about apps and stuff like this in snippets is I actually use Slopes quite a lot when we went skiing a, a few years ago and I quite liked it. And it also measures your speed and it's got all of the the um, the slope information, but they've updated it. It's even better now. So if you, you know, and I think it was free or it wasn't very expensive. So check it out anyway. Slopes iOS app. Um, it's really a, a pick. I should I should have put that in the pick, shouldn't I? Yeah, it doesn't uh, have much information about skiing in the UK or Florida, though. It, it has a lot about skiing in the UK. Don't it says? <laughs> just just don't go 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 someplace else. Now, while we were away, I think it was on the eighth of December, which I think is my dad's birthday. A time you. to remember. Uh, yeah, my dad's birthday. But on that day. In ha- Apple history, the Byte Shop opened, which was Apple's first customer. 47 oh, years ago. Sh- okay, I've got B-Y-T-E. B-Y-T-E, yeah, not the Byte Shop. Yeah. Yum, 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 yum. Yeah, I, actually, when you first said that, I thought you said bike, and it was like, what? <laughs> Apple selling bikes? Yeah. They are diversifying. Yeah, I buy one. Yeah. Um, Apple has announced a new security and privacy measures amid a surge in cyber attacks yes yes they're doing loads of stuff at the moment i'm not going to go into all the stuff that's happened over the last week um with the updates because there are much cleverer podcasts that do that <laughs> Wait, really are there are there really <laughs> no fbi has called apple's expansion of end-to-end encryption end and end-to-end encryption deeply concerning of course Ooh. they do, because they can't <laughs> listen in on the stuff on your Aunt Martha's uh, uh, apple cake recipe. That's what that's all they wanted. So, you know, you shouldn't have end to end encryption because you are denying the FBI the recipes they need for this holiday season. How dare you? <laughs> um, Tim Sweeney. Remember him? <laughs> oh, that asshole. Sorry. <laughs> so Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> in uh, your opinion, of course. In my opinion. Epic, epic Games will fight on to victory whatever it costs in Apple legal battle. Yeah, it might cost you a little bit more than you really want it to. It's probably already cost you quite a lot, Tim. Probably best to give up. That's all I can say. Um, Apple well, more about work- that in the next section. Excellent. Sort of. Apple store workers in Australia plan to go on strike during the busy holiday shopping period. Well... I don't think that's going to them. I don't think that's going to knock Apple's profits one iota. Um, Apple and Ericsson put an end to the patent lawsuits with a new licensing deal. Apple and Ericsson have reached a licensing agreement that will put to an end a years-long, increasingly nasty legal battle between the two companies. As announced in a press release, the deal includes a cross-license relating to patent cellular standard essential technologies and grants certain other patent rights. See, Apple get their way if they want to. Now, get this guy. This yeah. just th- this this surprises me the more it appears. Do you remember a few weeks ago? Well, it was more than a few weeks ago now because it was a few weeks ago before a few weeks ago. So that's probably at least a month ago. Many weeks ago. Many weeks ago, I mentioned that Apple iPod HomePod is now available in a few European countries. Yes. Well, now apparently it's it's now available in Sweden, Finland, and Norway. It it's it wasn't I, before. It was, well, that's the surprise, isn't it? That's what's amazing. I I would have thought it would have already been available there, but now you know what's even more surprising. Go on. 
that uh, that somebody felt necessary to report that in on online. It was like, yeah. hey, these three countries that that didn't have a product that's been out for two years, they've got it now. It's like, hey, I'm not going to knock it. It's over here. Well, it's close to us, but there you go. It's, it's in my no, snippet, right? It. It's in my snippet. I know. Right? That has that does not stop me from ranting, Gaz. No, it doesn't stop ever. you from ranting. Nothing ever stops you from ranting. <laughs> Never, right? ever. Apple have been sued by stalking victims over the alleged air tag tracking. <sighs> Shocker. Microsoft Authenticator app for Apple Watch to be discontinued next month. Now, why would I, you need an authenticator app for your watch? You don't need Are it you... for your watch. It's the authenticator app, which is on your watch, which allows you to authenticate when you are actually doing stuff elsewhere. Give me a case in point. Whenever I go onto a website and it wants me to verify who I am by Apple Pay or even PayPal, it asks, I can do it through my Apple Watch. Well, apparently, oh, okay. well, apparently Microsoft Authenticator app for Apple Watch is going to be discontinued, which is a shame because I think it's a, a good way of being authenticative. If that's such a word. <laughs> is that a word? No, it's not. There's an O in there. I love, you, I love, I love making up words. Yeah, it's me like, too. It's like that word that I've put also we've got together. Did you see that? that I changed. Have a look in the show. Yes. While I'm doing yes. That. I see that now. <laughs> Thank you. I spelt two folks with TWO. Um, <laughs> emergency SOS via satellite is now available in France, Germany, Ireland, and the UK. About time they got that satellite up there. Tim Cook in Japan has praised Sony camera sensors ahead of rumoured iPhone 15 improvements. Guess why? Because he might be using their uh, their sensors? I don't think it's a might at all. I think it is they are. <laughs> Best Buy and Apple expand Upgrade Plus financing program to include the iMac and Mac Studio. Great. Apple releases Mac OS Ventura 13.1 with Freeform, advanced data protection and find my improvements with much more um ios 16.2 ipad 16.2 and they fix over 30 security uh, <laughs> vulnerabilities i think home has been updated i think the watch has been updated i think your uh air tags has been updated i think if you can name it uh it's been, it's updated. been updated yeah. yeah yeah as long as it's compatible Tesla has released a holiday update with Apple Music, Ma Young, and much more. So, but it's the Apple Music I was interested in there, of course. And it doesn't Apple, interfere at all with self-driving, maybe. Not, not at all. Apple has mulled opening, uh, mulls opening a browser engine, NFC, and more to third-party apps. There's lots going on there at the moment, folks, in terms of... Um, what Apple may be doing in terms of opening up Safari and the App Store. Um, I think more will creep out as we move forward. Um, during the period, this was on around the 13th of December, Apple became more valuable than Google, Amazon, Tesla, and Walmart combined. So yay for all those people that own Apple stock, which doesn't include the subset of Gaz or me. <sighs> Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm like, Apple stock, twelve to thirteen dollars a share, nineteen ninety eight. Hmm. No, no, they're going out of business. Fuck. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think you might. I think you might have to find that guy. Oh. Have a quicker look at the timeline. Yeah, I am. One hour. <laughs> one hour. Holy <laughs> crap! Holy crippity crap! I really shouldn't have said that. Sorry. <laughs> Oh, people this don't is know why we is. can't have nice live things. <laughs> no, people people don't know what you said though because you found it and bleeped it out. Exactly. Um, apparently, and this is what I was going. Tim Cook admits that iPhones use Sony camera sensors. Mm -hmm. I wonder why that previous news article came out. Well, now we know. And why I said that word—that's the big question right there. Apple Store staff unionize in West London store with the unprecedented new redesign. I, I don't kind of get this in the UK because you can't not be unionized. You can join a union. If, you know, if everybody, if enough people want to join the union, they join, they join the union. Yeah. So this, this unionize word is kind of a bit, bit odd to me. But anyway, 
they're they're starting to join unions left, right, and centre all over the world from the Apple stores. Um, now, the abandonment of Apple CSAM scanning plans have been attacked by several regulators. Um, yeah, they're struggling with that, and I think they're actually going to – they've abandoned that scanning. And I don't quite know what's been going on there, but I did pick up a, another story. So Apple CSAM scanning plans may have to be abandoned, but that hasn't ended the controversy. An Australian regulator has accused the Cupertino company of turning a blind eye to the sexual exploit of children. So uh, she said, "Oh, that, okay." I was I was trying to remember what the hell that was. It was like, "Oh, okay, okay, I remember now." Yeah, you you know what we're talking about now, yeah. Yeah, why? I mean, yeah, why would they abandon it? Unless it just wasn't I think, that effective. I, th I, I think it was becoming too complicated or certain things were happening which caused backlash. And anyway, I don't know the full plans behind it. So all the full, full reasons behind it. But I did hear they were abandoning it. So if you if you need to do a bit of research on that, then please do it. Yeah, just look I up but C C S A M. Correct. Is that yes. what it is? C yeah. C S A M. Yes. Abandonment. If you want to put abandonment of CSAM. Yeah. Um, redesigned Apple Maps exercise. Oh, blah, 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 I'll do that again. Redesigned Apple Maps experience expands to users in five more countries, which are Netherlands, Belgium, Liechtenstein, Luxembourg, and Switzerland. They're getting, I, I like Apple Maps. It's getting better and better and better. It is. It's not as informative as ways when you're driving long distance, but mm, yeah. the, the three things they have, and the, the nice thing about maps versus ways. Now, ways will give you the ability to have like down to practically how many tires are on the car that's in the, the right hand lane that's broken down. Whereas Apple basically just says hazard, hazard. traffic, and uh, speed speed alert, something like that. Yeah, yeah, and that's it. So you know, you hit the little button, you hit one of those three, and you're done. Whereas with ways, it's like okay, this, and then this. Yeah. Okay, hold on, yeah. this, yeah. this, yeah. this. Yeah, this. I agree. Yeah. I agree. I I prefer it. But um, Samsung again apparently have mocked the lack of a foldable phone. Um, but because that's but, been so popular. Yeah, but sales data shows buyers don't care so samsung you want to be careful what you're mocking um apparently apple are going to expand the mythic quest universe with uh, a new companion series um apparently there's um extra footage of an emergency sos rescue that shows um the people were incredible incredibly lucky to escape um so i think a car came off a road and went down the side of a mountain plunged to the bottom of a ravine um, and they've been rescued, um, obviously, the SOS um, via satellite on the iPhone 14 kicked in, and the people were uh, okay, rescued. Well, that's but apparently that's it was, what it's supposed to do. But apparently they were extremely, extremely lucky, um, which is good. Apple TV Plus has cancelled Shantaram only after one season. I have not even seen that it. Is. Oh, is I that the musical it. thing where the two people got... Okay. Uh, I, I didn't watch it, it. It was a series, so I doubt that it was a musical thing. I can't imagine a. Oh, I thought a it was a comedy. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay, never mind. <laughs> Apple apparently wants to offer NFL Sunday ticket to Apple TV Plus um, to Apple TV Plus subscribers at no extra cost, but the NFL have gone. Oh, oh, I'm not sure about that. More later. More later. Apple stocks. Um, breaks below the key support. So basically, Apple shares fell to $1.99, which was down 1.46% to 134.51. Um, uh, this after the stock had already fell 47 on Thursday. So Apple's starting to struggle a little bit like the rest of the planet is. Um, it's, you know. it's a stock price. Honestly. Yeah, absolutely. It It'll go affect, up and down. It doesn't really affect the company. At the all. reason I put it, the reason I put it in, uh, the reason I put it in that, well, it will for investment in the future, but um, the reason I put it in is I often talk about it when it's going up. So I thought, oh, hang on a minute, I, you know, I nearly didn't put it in, but It'd I thought, fair, I, yeah. I'm going to be fair. So um, get ready for the new year. Oh no, no, that's something I've got a, a review actually. So, and here's my last <laughs> story. 
here's my last story, okay. which refers back to the NFL. After months of months of negotiations, Apple have reportedly exited the running in the running for the NFL Sunday ticket package. So apparently they are not going to be getting the NFL Sunday package at all. You know, and here's this this is where the NFL just so has their heads up their ass that 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 they can't figure it out. If you make the games available for streaming, even games that are in local markets where they're not sold out, you make so much more money from advertising than you do with butts and seats that you should just be offering this to everyone so that they can watch whatever game with whatever commercials, whatever ads that you want to put in for these games. And there's a butt ton of ads in every single NFL game that you're, you're just not seeing the point. You're so fixated on, yeah, well, but let, let's have, I, let's have yeah, a package guy, for Monday. Let's have a package yeah, for Thursday. Yeah. But guy, I think the problem is that um, the NFL doesn't want this on a worldwide basis. And that's what probably Apple are looking to do to make it sure it should that, be on a worldwide basis. Yeah, but then your advertising is irrelevant, isn't it? Because a local out, you know, any it's got to be it's got to be global advertising. You see, um, but see, that's where each of the games joining with a company, and and I'm not going to just say just Apple. You could do it with Google. You could do it with Amazon. You could do it with any of the big global platforms and have featured advertising per region and make it relevant, make the advertising relevant to people that live in that region. It, it, not everybody is going to want to see commercials for Bud Light. I don't want to see commercials for Bud Light. I don't drink Bud Light or anything like that. So you would instead put in a commercial for uh, diapers or, or feminine hygiene products or whatever the hell it is that people in that region would want to see as compared to Bud Light commercials. Well, But you it, can't do that with a company that doesn't have a global reach. Well, it looks like they don't want whatever yeah, it is. It's Apple irrelevant is now. So, wait, hold on. Where's that soapbox? Oh, there it is. I'm yeah, stepping there's the soapbox. Of Step down off the soapbox, and I will end Gazzy's snippets. Wow. That was a long I one. Didn't realize I'd got quite as much. I thought I'd pared it down a little bit, but obviously. <laughs> And you know what? I was just getting ready to say, let's take our break now, but we don't do that anymore. We don't so, do that. We don't yeah. Do that. So stand by for like more content. <laughs> do you have a link this week? I do not. Okay. Well, then we are going to jump right into uh, the, the main story for this week, which is the rumored quotes. Uh, third-party app stores that may be coming. Now, there's lots which I, of... Which I hinted at in... Uh, in right, uh, with, with Tim A.H. Uh, Sweeney from e Epic Games. And if you don't know what A.H. means, listen to the comment that I'm going to have to bleep out later, uh, and you'll pretty much know what that means. Um, <clears throat> there has been an ongoing lawsuit in the EU against Apple uh, concerning access for other companies and services beyond what Apple offers for uh, iOS and iPadOS. And it's looking more and more like they're going to be forced by the EU to allow these third-party app stores and other alternative means to procuring and installing iOS and iPadOS app stores outside of Apple's own app store. And there's some, as usual with these kinds of decisions, there's some pluses and some minuses. And the only gas, the only plus I could think of was that you will no longer be restricted to applications that are just allowed by Apple in their app store. Can, can you think of any other pluses? Um, the only... No, because I just think that the person or company or governing body that is putting at risk my ability to be able to choose a secure and reliable environment that I've chosen, so that person, company or governing body, if you want to play it as a game I along with, I'm sure a lot of other people will continue to call you nasty, horrible people for putting my security at jeopardy. So no, I can't think of any other pluses, yeah. to be honest with you. And there's lots of downsides. 
Yes. Um, as has been shown uh, on the Android side of things. And it's not to say, you, you know, it, it's real easy for those of us who have been using iOS and iPadOS for a very long time to kind of look down our noses at Android and go, oh, it's a security nightmare. You know, every app is malware, blah, blah, blah. But to be fair, if you're just in, if you're just using the Google App Store, you're relatively safe. It, it's not that dissimilar to what Apple does with yeah. their own app store. So using a little common sense, using Android and Android applications, using just the Google app store for the most part is fine. And, um, uh, and I'm saying that as someone who actually has owns and uses an Android phone for where I work and it's, it's, fine and it's my phone it's not work's phone so i manage it and pay for it myself and there's reasons why i do that but it's irrelevant to this discussion now as far as apple goes uh the downside and we'll we'll go through these one by one uh number one is the potential security issues apple curates all of the applications that you can get for iPad OS and iOS, and they're not a hundred percent. They certainly do make mistakes, but for the most part, applications that you get from those two stores are going to be safe. Can't say that for third-party stores. Would you agree with that? Oh, totally, one hundred percent. I, th- I, you know, it, it's. I'm just I'm almost in the the lines of rereading what I just read to you I it just I, I just don't want I don't want it I don't I don't need it. it it used to be something that was useful um certainly when it comes in terms of jailbreaking so you know you could if you could then get a third party app but I think it'll yeah. make the whole I think it'll make the whole user experience just an absolute nightmare so perhaps that's where Apple are coming from you know, they might come down to the line of saying, well, if you switch on, if you go to this uh, sub level of security in your settings and you go to this level, and then this level, this level, and this level, if you really want it, you can turn it on. And as soon as you turn it on, that goes, but remember, you know, you're, you're, you're risking losing all of your possible warranty. If you download a non viable Apple app that causes you a problem because you know, what's going to happen guy, as soon as somebody gets loses a load of money because they've downloaded an app and it's then taken all of their bank details and s- Apple is going to get sued for letting them download that app. Yeah. And did I go off know, track there? <laughs> no, 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 not at all. Here's here's the thing. If Apple is forced to do this, you're right. They're they're basically going to put in a script that if you go to your settings and enable third party application or side loading or or however they end up describing it, Apple is not going to step in and help you if you lose a lot of money or you you lose a lot of data. Now, as far as warranty goes, I don't know if they can, if they could do that, if, if it, if there's a problem with the phone, as far as hardware goes, I think they'll still be on the hook for that. But for the most part, what we're really talking about here is your data. And that includes things like credit card details and um, the ability to manage your children's downloads. So if suddenly you for your kid's phone, you turn off just using the Apple store and your kids go in and do something like, oh, let's think about this. Um, go into Fortnite, the Fortnite store and buy all this garbage that's going to make their character unique as compared to the other characters in the game. And it costs you hundreds of dollars or pounds. Apple's not going to reimburse you for that you're going to have to go to whatever store it was that they bought that stuff from and good luck getting your money back on that 
because once they have it, they're not going to give it back to you. Um, but actually, on that note, let me go off on a, a slightly side note here. Does anyone think, because, you know, Tim Sweeney ugh, and Epic Games has been beating the drum for this for a very, very long time. And let's not pretend at all that this isn't in Tim Sweeney and Epic Games' own self-interest to do this. That if this becomes a thing, it's not like Epic Games is going to turn around and say, okay, well, we're also going to allow third-party stores to buy updates and upgrades to Fortnite characters that, yep. that we have exclusive to now. Yeah, it works two ways. That. Works two ways. And actually, well, yeah, but they won't Tim, until yeah, but somebody sees no, no, them in no, the same no, way that they no, do but, now. No, but that's what I'm saying. It works two ways. Yeah. That's precisely the point. The, yeah. What Tim Sweeney and, and the likes of Epic Games and these other companies, they're not really interested in uh, third party. They, they, well, they, they are interested in third party because they want to be the store. They don't want you to go through a third party store. They want to be the store so that they can make as much, you know, money as they possibly can and totally tie you into their, their ecosphere. Yeah. A little bit like Apple does, but, you know, it's, it's so much freer within Apple. You know, you've got other things which are going on. It's not just, you know, the, the sole, um, aspect of making money through that software that they're selling you. Um, I, I, I just don't like it. I don't like it. I just don't like it. I don't like it at all. I don't see any upsides, you know, you've given, you know, a bit of an upside, but I don't, I don't see that as an upside. I don't see any upsides in this process. And I really don't get, you know, the, the, the intellectual bias, uh, of the, not just the EU. There are plenty of governments that are looking for this around the world as well. I, yeah. the, their intellectual lack of intelligence all it's one and the same thing um it just goes to prove that they don't understand what's going on and they don't understand what they're asking for well uh, it's even worse than that it, it's it's not just gym. that they don't understand it's that they're allowing themselves to be bought by um oh, what do they call those people um uh uh, I keep wanting to say analysts, not analysts, the uh, uh, lobbyists, lobbyists, lobbyists yeah, yeah, yeah. that uh, pour a lot of money into uh, re here, quotes, re election campaigns, and they expect some kind of return on that investment. So, you know, so you have people in the EU and people in the, the US Senate and the US House that espouse whatever nonsense it is that yeah i don't but i don't i don't them. yeah but i don't get that though guy because I, I i don't think it's that because if they've got that much money they would be in you know, i suppose it's the likes of 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 epic that are doing it possibly um no it's not just epic but you see, the thing is, it used to be a lot easier on, on so I've heard, on Carl. Uh, on Carl. I, I, the reason I mentioned Carl is because he's having a Discord chat in about um, half an hour. So that's the reason I just said Carl. I didn't mean to say Carl at all. So if you're listening, Carl, hi. Um, anyway, <laughs> um I don't know where I was going with that, that argument now. I've completely flummoxed myself. You were talking about lobbyists. Yeah, I just, you know, the money, I no, where I was going with, what I've heard is that Google and Android, they are now making it so much more difficult to actually get these third-party app stores uh, embedded onto your phone. You know, you have to you have to go through so many hoops to click the switch to get it on. I think Apple is yeah. just going to do the same. So I don't think it will be possibly as bad as we are thinking it's going to be, um, as long as it is clear that it's not um, something which happens automatically. If you have to go through lots of hurdles to switch this sort of process on, then, you know, Most people I, won't. Uh, most people won't know it'll only be the people that know that they want it and they should understand the implications of turning it on so that's sure. fine that's fine as long as we go down that avenue i'm not so worried about this whole process yeah because those people are so smart and not l l litigious 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 yeah. Lit yes. whatever the hell that Absolutely. word is i know what at you mean. all <laughs>
at all. New words. We should have called this the New Words Podcast. Well, that's because you'd like to name the podcast before we even start. Litigious. (laughs) <laughs> um one of the other potential issues for this is malware uh you start going to third party stores you like you may see this thing is like oh this is the greatest update to your game whatever you know you can you can have this cheat that will allow you to automatically kill everybody and you'll get all the money and it turns out it's just there to infect your phone which you won't know until you infect your phone and again you do that Apple isn't going to come to your rescue because they will know when they look at your phone that you did something really dumb. Dumb. And doing the dumb means Apple can just hand you back your phone and say, good luck. Good luck with that. How'd that work out for you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, The last downside that I have here is just crappy apps. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, it's Story. well I, I, you'd say it's the last thing i think along with that goes you know a completely crappy um experience user experience you know the whole thing just becomes a nightmare yeah but as i say i'm i'm i, I totally agree with the crappy apps and I, I think that you know that's why apple will want the user experience of their device to be so much better so they are going to make it there you go it's there EU lawmakers and many other lawmakers, yeah. not just the EU, but boy, do you have good to jump through, that. but boy, do you have to jump through some hurdles to get there, which will be good. I hope. And, and that's not to mention exposing credit card details and, yeah. and yeah. all yeah. the rest of that. And, you know, and I'm willing to bet that regardless of how you have your settings, Apple won't allow Apple pay to be yeah. used no. with any of these third-party stores no, I now not. if you want to go to those third-party stores and manually enter your apple card credit card details they can't stop you from that no. however they don't necessarily have to protect you from yourself if you do something really stupid <sighs> so um that's i think that's that's pretty much all we have for that and i see you're nodding your head i am you are hit it Gases and tips. Most of them. Gases and tips. Most of them. Gases and tips. It's time for Gases and tips. Oh, well-oiled machine. That's us. Well-oiled. <laughs> and this this is a really, really quick tip. It's a Mac tip. Um, I think I recently mentioned this where, you know, you can do your app switcher by hitting command and tab. And you go yeah. through your, your tabs and you can go backwards and forwards, I think, by going shift as well. If I, if I remember, if yes. you shift, it goes backwards and forwards. Did you know that while you're going through that, the app that you've got highlighted in front of you, while you've still got your finger down on the command key, if you press the Q key, don't do it now, guy. (laughs) Don't do it now because it might be the app which you need. If you press the Q key, it actually deletes and closes the app. How about that? Well, I'm going to try that. Well done, guy. (laughs) He's crashed. No, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm nodding my head. He is. He's so nodding. Hit it. That's the end of Gaz's Tips. That's Most the end of Gaz's Tips. That's Most the end of Gaz's Tips. Okay, is that the, uh, the end of the cut? Will you let me finish? Gaz's Tips. Gaz, you are absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, dear. That does make you giggle, doesn't it? Oh, president is an utter moron. moron. Where the hell did that come from? I don't know. Yeah, it's well, yours. It's not mine. Seconds later. Twelve yeah. seconds later. Twelve seconds later. <laughs> All right. Um, Stand by for action. <laughs> we have we have no no feedback this week, uh, and we're going to tell you how to ah, give us feedback. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> based based on this week's show uh you can you'll be able to send us feedback and tell us where we are wrong or where we are right and whether you agree with us or not um we'll talk about that in a bit however i do have some links the usual links actually guy can i just say it's more yeah. likely that people are going to write in and tell us where we're right because we're always wrong yeah yeah so i guess that would be the unusual bit yeah <laughs> hold on a second hold on you're telling me yes that guy and gaz gave us actual factual relevant information in the podcast this week 
I like get the, out of town. I like the first part of that. Actual factual. Actual factual. And then, you can just we, combine those two words. Well, I think we I think Act we fact. should. No, Act no, fact. we call it we call it the actual factual section. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah, whether we're right or not. That's how that works. Yes. So, uh, timeout.com list of helpful Ukrainian donation sites will be in the show notes, along with links to the Ukrainian Red Cross and Doctors Without Borders. If you can this holiday season, please, please, please hit those links. Send some, uh, send some needed support to uh, either one of those two organizations. It is for a good cause. Now... Uh, no feedback this week, as I already said, so I'm not sure why I said it again. But if you would like to support <laughs> the MyMac.com podcast and all of the other crazy stuff that I do, you can go to Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Mac Parrot. <laughs> you can go to coffee, ko-fi.com forward slash Mac Parrot. <laughs> or... You can pay a pal at paypal.me forward slash MacPedit. Ah! Uh, those are all the different ways that you can support the show. You don't have to. We'll keep doing it no matter what you do or say. Anyway, uh, Gaz, if people wanted to contact you and say, my God, this week you guys said something really good. How would they do that? Easy, send an email to Gaz, G-A-Z, at yeah. mymac.com or, uh, well, you can go to Gazmaz which is G-A-Z-M-A-Z on Counter Social, Mastodon, and Twitter. Very good. You can probably find Gazmaz in Instagram as well if you really look hard enough. I I try try and go as Gazmaz everywhere. So it's G-A-Z-M-A-Z. You can also find on the Twitters, though, uh, twitter.com forward slash guy and Gaz, G-Y-A-N-D-G-A-Z. You can also send an e- email to feedback at mymac.com, F W D B A C K at mymac.com. I like to go with Guy. What? I like to go with Guy. Do we know it was a guy? We know it was a guy. Guy says. What does Guy says? Pay no attention to Wait, that guy behind the curtain. I, they don't. He, he, they, they, well, they don't. <laughs> because, the yeah. You remember Guy? Guy. Guy? His name was Guy. Absolutely. Oh. Now. Hey, welcome to the Guy Podcast. Welcome to the Guy Podcast. Guy. Yeah, Guy. 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 Yeah! Wait, you let who kiss you? Guy. <laughs> guy, we need to talk. Blue Guy. Who the hell even knows who this guy is? So, Guy. Who are you, really? Just who is this guy? Who is this guy? Who is this guy? I'm a good guy. <laughs> no fooling. <laughs> <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> Hallelujah! If you want, an email from how would they do it? Oh, I swear, every week, every single week, I'm going to lose my mind. Uh, you can reach me, guy, at mymac.com. Also, podcast. <clears throat> as I lose my voice, podcast at vertshark.com. You can find me on the Twitters, uh, Mac Pettit. Or Vert Shark. And over there also on Counter Social and Mastodon, uh, Mac Parrot. Honestly, I don't go to Mastodon that much anymore. It just seems to be, you know, and for, for all, this, this isn't going to go off on a different tangent, though I <laughs> guess it kind of is. Um, all the people that said they were leaving Twitter, for the most part, didn't. Didn't. They seem to be coming back because they can't get the type of engagement on Mastodon as they thought they were going to. Um, I love Counter Social. I think Counter Social is is kind of a cool and good alternative. So you can find me as Mac Parrot on either <laughs> Counter Social or the other place that I just talked about. Yeah. So uh, you can also <laughs> reach us via our Skype telephone number, which Gaz will come as no surprise to you or it Marcus won't. or Greg from NC or Greg from NY, for that matter, is one or plus one outside of the United States. Seven, oh, three, four, three, six, nine, five, oh, one. Uh, that number again is one or plus one outside of the United States. Seven, uh, zero, three, four, three, six, nine, five, zero, one. Or if 
a one or a plus one gives you a rash because you know you're that kind of weird person you can just skip that altogether go right to the skype application and just dial seven zero three four three six nine five oh one now I would like to say to everyone who has watched and or listened to the MyMac.com podcast this week or any week, thank you. Sincerely, you know, we we goof around a lot on this show and we have a good time doing it, but we are grateful to each and every one of you, uh, not just during the holiday season, but every week of the year for joining us here on the MyMac.com podcast. It is greatly appreciated. And Gaz, because of that, I think that they believe, rightly or wrongly, that we're good enough, that they believe rightly or wrongly, mostly wrongly, that we're smart enough, and that I saw all those new pictures of Wilf, and I'm just going to say, doggone it, Wilf, Wolf, Wolf, Wilf, Wolf, 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 <laughs> Wolf, <laughs> Wolf, <laughs> people like us. I, yeah. What does a lemon say when it answers the phone? Yellow. I was thinking sour, but that's that's even better. End. Get out of here now. Go on. Go on home and I, I go home.